Welcome back to Design Build Launch, the free course where we're building a website with Framer. In today's video, we're gonna add page transitions to our website so that we can have this nice page transition on every page. We're also gonna add a few hover interactions like this one or this one to our project just to get it closer to being finished. If you missed the last video where we made this thing completely responsive, make sure you check that out with the link in the description or on the screen now. Let's get started. So we're gonna have a page transition, transition from each of the pages. So let's create that here in the pasteboard. So I'm gonna go up here to layout and grab the columns. Then I'm just gonna drag one out. And for now, we'll set this to our typical viewport size, which is 1568 by 1024. I'm going to delete one of these frames for now, just so we have this initial one. And let's call this stack loader. And then I'm gonna call this crop section because we're gonna be using this to crop out a rectangle that's gonna slide up and out of the way. So inside of this, we'll just drag out another frame. And this one we will set to our primary green color. And then we can remove the color from our crop section. Let's grab the loader and make sure we remove the gap by setting it to zero. Then we'll grab our crop section and make sure this is set to fill one frame for both. And then for our rectangle here, I'll change all of these values on the top left, right, and bottom to zero. Then with the crop section now done, we can hit command D on that to duplicate it. And we'll just do about six of these. You can have as many of these as you like. Now that we have that set up, let's right click on the loader and create component. And we'll call that loader. We're gonna have two variants, so we'll make another variant here. The first one we will call visible, and the second one we will call hidden. The only change we need to do here is inside of each of these crop sections, we need to grab the frame itself, and we need to move it up by negative 100, which is gonna push it up a little bit higher. And then we need to set it to 1DH which will put it way up here at the top, 100 off, and only 1% of the viewport high. So it's gonna slide up and out of the way. So for the rest of these, let's go ahead and grab all of them at once, holding Command. We'll do the exact same thing for the top value, negative 100, which will push all of them up. And then for the height value, we'll set it to 1VH, and you'll see everything is invisible now. With that set up, let's go back to the home, and then we can drag the loader into our desktop, and I'm gonna put it all the way at the top. So that will put it here at the start of our page, and what we need to do is now change this from a static width and height to be responsive, so we'll set it to relative, 100% for the width, and for the height, we'll set it to 100% of the viewport. That'll make sure this responds to the size of our browser. One very important thing we need to make sure we do is go to styles and add a Z index of 10 to this. This way it is on top of absolutely everything on the website while the animation is going. Currently nothing's gonna happen, however, because we haven't set up our transition. So I'm gonna double click to open this back up. To add our interaction, select visible, and then we can click on this lightning bolt and drag a wire over to hidden. And this is going to be on appear, so when it shows up on the user's screen. We want a delay of 0.5, and that's all we have to do. Now, if we go back to our homepage and we hit play, you can see everything slides up and out of the way. Now we just need to add the delay so that all the columns go at different times. So back inside of the loader, first we'll grab this first frame, we'll go to style and add a transition. With that transition added, I'm gonna simply set it to ease, and then change the time to about 0.5. For the second one, we'll do the same thing. Ease, 0.5, but this time we'll have a 0.1 delay. The next one, we'll have a 0.2 delay. And for each one, we're just gonna keep adding 0.1 to the delay for the rest of the remaining frames. Also, I forgot, I'm gonna change the ease on these to ease out. So once again, for the first one, I have 
point 0.1 on the delay. The second one is point 0.2 all the way over to point 0.6. With that set up, I'll just hit preview here and you can see each one slides up out of the way. So if we go back to the home page, the next thing we need to do is set this to fixed. That way it's over top of this section here. So we'll go to position, fixed, and there we go. All we then need to do is copy this component and then add it to the rest of our pages. Two things to finish off the loader. If you want to work with the content below this, like you wanna work on the hero section, you can just go over here, right click and hide, and then you can start working and editing the hero section. But you'll wanna make sure that you turn this back on to show before you publish or else it will just not show up. So if it's not showing up on your website, it's because you've forgotten to show it. And the final thing is when we currently load this in, we can't actually click any of our links. And that's because this is on top of everything still, even though the green rectangles are up out of our way, the overall loader container is still here. So to fix that, we can go to styles, add a pointer events, and then make sure it is set to none, which will allow our mouse pointer to go through this and actually interact with all of our different elements on our page now. Next, let's add a few interactions to our website. So on every page that I'm working on, I'm just gonna select this, go to the loader, right click and hide, and now we can work on this. So the few interactions we're gonna add in this video, we're gonna add the hover effect when you hover over a link, I want the cursor to get a little larger. And when you're in the work page, when you hover over this image, I want this to link to the actual project along with this button. So we're gonna create a cursor effect for that as well. So first thing, I'm just gonna go through all four of my pages and I'm going to hide the loader for now. We'll turn that back on when we're ready to publish, but for now, we don't need to work on it anymore. So we'll go ahead and hide this. Next, I'm gonna double click on my cursor component. We have an explore designs hover effect. So let's create a new one just like that, except for this one, we'll put in the text view project. We'll make sure we'll name it. Then we're gonna create one more variant. I'm gonna select the text, hit delete or a backspace, and then we'll shrink this down to 48 in size. This one we'll just call dot hover or larger dot, whatever you want to call it. And that's the final two interactions we need for our cursor. So to apply those, all we need to do is select the links we want these applied to. So on this page in particular, I have these three links here in the footer. These two I left unlinked, but you can feel free to link them if you'd like. You can simply just link this to whatever URL or page you want right here. I, however, am just going to leave it for now. So I'm not gonna set these two up, but I will set up the Explore Designs because that's actually a working link. So we'll go to Cursor and Custom Cursor. For this, I'm gonna select our cursor, select our dot hover, and then I just want to replace the cursor so that when we hover over this, the cursor gets a little bit larger and we can tell that this is a link that way. So now that I've added that to both of the navigation links, the hero link, and then the explore designs. And of course, if you're gonna link these two up, there is on this page, these two at the bottom to link up to this. If you're gonna link these to an actual page, which you should, if they're gonna be there. And then we can go to the next page. Here, what we're gonna do is the same one. So I'm gonna do the logo first, then the navigation links on the view project button in the bottom right. And then finally, I want to add a link onto this actual image. So we're gonna add a new link. Here in the link field, we can select the slug. So whatever slug is for this image, it will automatically link to that project. And we also wanna add a cursor, custom cursor. And this time we want to select the other cursor we made called view project, replace, and we don't need a transition. So when we hover over this, it says view project over here, this one blows up. Same up top with all of our links, so this page is good. We can move on to the project page. Here we have our three links at the top. And then our view project down here at the bottom. Also, make sure that you go to the last page. Since we are swapping from the default collection list to a new one, you want to make sure you add that hover on view project as well, or else the hover effect won't work on the last page. Also a quicker way to do this, if I grab the view project button, 
hold shift, grab the text, and then grab the work text and the contact text. You can also grab these two once again if you're adding them. And then you can go to cursor, custom cursor, and then add these all at once, which will help speed this up drastically. So that's set for all of them. So now it works for all of them. So I think that will do it for today's video. We'll stop here. And in the next one, we're gonna finish this website off completely, just adding a few animations, a smoothing scroll effect, and the SEO and setting everything up to get this thing ready to hit this publish button. Make sure you check out Framer with the link at the top of the description. Thanks to them for sponsoring this entire free course. As always, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video coming out. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.